Okay, now, the other thing that I liked to get done on the first day is paint, putting the first coat of gold paint on the surface of the, the this is the face of the gate maker mechanism, um, which I'll then put the path strips on and the sephirotic circles and the uh, crystals go in the center of these holes down into the body of the gate maker and then they get covered with the um, sephirotic circles. So, I will put probably three coats of gold paint on here. It takes about that many coats to get a thick enough uh, uh, opaque layer. Um, so, container, gold paint, glue, <clears throat> all the essentials. Gold paint there. There we go. That's enough. So I put about that much paint in. Then comes glue. If I can get this bottle open. glued it shut. Okay, now I want to put in about as much glue. Pretty much 50-50 is the mix that I'm using for this particular application. In general, that's what I do. At least 50% glue. And mix. Takes a fair amount of stirring. And your color will always appear to be much paler than it dries to. Because the glue dries clear and doesn't really affect the color. It affects the, um, the surface texture and the durability. And that's what we're up to now. And so now I add a little bit of water because it's always too thick, really, to apply. If you end up adding too much water, you can always add more glue and a little more paint. but I'll be um, adding water to it periodically. Um, like uh, next tomorrow, I'll add some water to it before I begin painting with it because it will have dried out a little bit since, you know, overnight. It doesn't dry out a whole lot. A uh, pot of color will last me, can last up to five, six days before I need to uh, refresh it. In the end, I end up wasting a lot of glue and paint. It's, a lot goes down the drain. But I always try to mix more than I will possibly need, especially if it's a custom color, not straight from the bottle. Uh, I definitely want to make more than uh, I will use. Okay. So, that's the finished product. <clears throat> 
So what I am going to paint to, I'm going to paint to my outer edge, um, uh, you know, over the outer edge a little bit. And each of these holes, it will eventually be cut out. So I want to run the glue up, I mean the color, up to and perhaps over uh, the edge of these holes a little bit to make sure that the part that is going to show is thoroughly covered. Oh. Now, how I paint surfaces with this mixture of glue and paint is I do like a chucker pattern um, on the surface. I don't go in straight lines, like I don't go down, down like that, because doing that inevitably ends up with lines in the paint. Um, this finish, however, gives it sort of a burnished look, especially with the metallic gold. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm basically painting the triangles of the tree. Um, if you break the tree down into little triangles, that is what I'm painting up. So there is that triangle. I'm now going to paint this triangle. And I work my way, and that gives it a good, thick coat of paint. Now. I started at the bottom this time, and next coat will go from the top. So uh, there is an unevenness that develops from top to bottom each time. So by alternating, I get a more even coat in the end. Better coverage. So now I'm going to this triangle. triangles of the tree of life okay now that has to dry and that will dry for until tomorrow sometime tomorrow what I'm going to do now is some of these need to be glued onto Hard. Ah. That one does not. Okay. So, the Sephiroth, uh, the uh, let's see, inner circle. Okay. That doesn't. That does. Okay. The uh, Sephirotic decorations that go on the gold face I just painted need to be glued onto card, this the white card, um, and then they are cut out from the white card and glued onto the gold face once the, um, the quartz spheres are in place. So they sort of cap everything off. The, those have to be glued on card and the decoration that gets uh, glued to the lid, the top of the lid, 
also needs to go onto card. So I'm going to glue these two pages onto card. Okay, let's hope that all worked. So we're slopping glue on here. You want to really press these down so that they make good contact with the card. Because you don't want these peeling up at a later date. Okay, that gets set aside to dry. It will dry till tomorrow sometime at the earliest. Now we do this guy. Again, I'm mindful of what I'm doing. I'm mindful that this is the tree of life. I'm mindful that that is Kether, Tiferet, Yesod, Malkuth, etc. So all the time that I'm working on this, I'm putting these thoughts into this material. And at the end, it ends up being a whole being, if you will. Okay, so this is dried overnight, and as you can see, I hope, in this camera, it doesn't make a very thorough coating on one coat. So we go for another coat. This time we start at the top and head towards the bottom. Okay, there it goes. And yeah, we're gonna wash our brush out now. And let that dry and prepare for coat number three. Knees 
needs a little bit more water. Okay, there we go. That looks good. Okay, we'll let that dry and that should probably be enough. But we'll see when it dries how good the coverage is. Okay, now I've gotten my three coats of gold on here and it is good enough, yes. So what I need to do now and uh, what is next is putting all of the path strips, gluing them all to this gold face and what I have to do first is cut all of them. I don't cut them out yet, but I do make cuts that enable me to cut them out. And I'll show you what that means. Um, what I have to do is cut the sides of each of these strips. Um, and you need a very sharp exacto blade to do that and this one is still sharp enough not too dinged up from doing the wire so i will cut all of these and that way when it comes to actually laying the path strips out all i have to do is cut the ends and i have it in hand okay so we start by making this two pieces and, yeah. and you want to cut right along the very edge so that the uh, path strip maintains its width.
Okay, so that's all the path strips prepared. The next step is to take this and draw, using my compass, draw circles on it. Now, the two circles that are necessary for this process. The primary one on here is the outer dimension of the Sephirotic um, decorations that I put on. We want to mark that on here so that as we put the path strips, actually take a fresh one. As we put the path strips on, they want to um, go over that line so that uh, when I cut that line out um, there's enough room for the Sephirotic um, decorations uh, and the path strips themselves. So let's just see here. Again, this is done in the uh, uh, creative sequence. Okay, down to putting the path strips, gluing the path strips onto the gold surface. Uh, yes. And you'll notice if you look closely at the, uh, the file that I uh, gave you, each of these path strips has a little mark at the center on the bottom and the center on the top. Now, 
these those marks are for lining them up on these lines okay makes sense as I go along so and these are done again in the uh, creative sequence so that at the end it's um, different layer layers of paths that cross over each other end up um, being on the decoration here you can see which path came first and which path came second etc I like to get a few cut so that I have a few to work with. I generally go by Sephora, but these are the paths for the first three Sephora, basically. Okay. Oh, yes, I must prepare my glue. Now, this is uh, very important to have the glue at the uh, correct consistency. It needs to be fairly thin. And I think this is, well, huh. That's probably good enough, actually. Okay. So it's sort of a delicate process because you don't want to get glue all over the front of these path strips. So, uh, I, do this, do that, and make sure it's coated in glue because you want the glue to absorb into the cardstock a little bit. You don't want it so wet that it gets it sloppy and soppy, but you want to get a good um, solid covering of glue on the pass strip and let it dry out a little bit. As soon as it uh, starts to lose its glossiness you can go ahead and glue it on okay it's starting to lose the glossiness so this is hey one to two sometimes it's hard to tell Ah, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Come. Okay. Yeah. And you go from point to point. Get the little marks lined up with the line and there you go now the next one And it's good to have a rag to wipe your fingers off as you're doing this. Because again, you don't want to get glue on the facing side. You also don't want to do that. Now, the bigger the path strip is, 
the more difficult it is to get glue on it. It's especially true for the really long path strips that are narrower as well. So it takes some getting used to. You might have to uh, print out two sets of these. <laughs> Another difficulty with the longer strips is that by the time you work your way down to this other end down here, this end is already, already drawing. So you need to go back over the initial end so that it's all sort of even at the end here. Now, where the path strips overlap, I take my fingernail and I press in here in such a way that it's right up against the underneath path strip. So that it highlights that one is crossing over the other. Now, some of this will get cut out, but it's still good to do this to finish it more. Okay, so that's the first three strips. And the rest process is exactly the same, just varying sizes of strips. And like I said, I'm doing this in the creative sequence. So, like that one. We did this path first, this second, and this third. Okay. Okay, now you can get more of an idea of the effect. It has a three-dimensional effect. It is literally one on top of the other, and there is a little shadow created by the, uh, the topmost path. Yes. <clears throat>
Okay, all done. Now I always check to make sure that I've got everything right. Simply by checking that's all white, that's all gray, that's all black, yellow, blue, red, purple, green, and orange, and brown. So that means I've got all the path strips on correctly. Um, and you'll notice while I was doing it that I used my finger a lot. It's important to have decent sized fingernails <laughs> For doing this, I'll cut my fingernails later when I'm through making the gate maker. But the fingernails and hands, these are the greatest tools of all. Uh, you know, better than a ruler or a compass or a pencil even. <laughs> so, the hands are important. Now, we're going to set that aside to dry. And the next on the list is cutting out the sephirotic discs. I have to cut these out before I can continue with the, um, the facing. Okay. Okay. So I start with the Sephiroth uh, decorations by cutting them out. So that they are a little smaller, a little easier to handle uh, as I cut them. So they're all cut out. I got to stick them in order. Okay. Now, cutting these out, I have to cut out the inner circle first and then I cut out the whole disc. And this is very hard on the hands, very hard on the hands. It's really my least favorite part of the whole process because it takes such a toll. Um, but it must be done. So, glass is off. And start to cutting. And you need a sharp blade, but if you use a new blade, a brand new blade on these, you inevitably break the tip off of the blade. So there is a way I've developed of actually cutting the very tip off with my wire cutters and then sharpening down the, um, the tip of the blade. Um, so at any rate, this is, this is a good blade for it and we will make do. Now, the inner circle, I cut it this way, okay? The outer circle, I cut it this way. This bevels the edge in the way that works best for making a gate maker. 
Okay. And you have to be very exact and very careful in cutting these. Just take your time. It is a very time consuming process. Okay. There's the center. Now for the outside. just broke the tip of my blade.
And there's a finished product. Okay, so...
Whoa, geez, there it goes. All done with those. Yeah. Okay, what's next is I have to clean up the face a bit. Now, you can see here that the um, bits of path strips are just messy. And I cannot fit um, a sephirotic um, decoration where it needs to go. So, I need to trim the ends of the path strips. And how I do that is with my compass, I mark the area that I have to cut off. Okay, so I have marked the area that I need to trim. So I will trim those and make sure that the sephirotic discs fit in and neaten it all up. Okay. Okay, so I will cut these out following the creative sequence. And you only want to cut through, for the most part, well, the path strip itself. You don't want to cut through the underlying gold painted uh, face here. Just the path strip. So you got to be careful and not cut too deeply as you're going. Uh, It's okay if you cut into the um, the gold level, um, the gold layer, just a little bit. You will pretty much inevitably, um, but you don't want to cut through it. You do not want to cut through it. So I go around once in a line through the path strips lightly. And then I go through a second time to go through the path strips completely. Again, being careful not to go through the gold layer. Okay, so inevitably, I've, I've cut through. The, inevitably, the path strips are glued in this area. So you want to remove the main body of the path strip from that area so that the sephirotic discs will fit down nicely. And this is kind of an annoying process. It takes a little bit of time. And you've got to be careful. Sometimes they come up just real easily. Other times they don't. You have to really work at cleaning um, the area there. didn't take off all of the path strips, so I'm going to scrape here with my X-Acto knife and get more of the stuff off that I don't need on there.
This has the sound of being at the dentist's office, having your teeth cleaned. It's, uh, it's sort of annoying, especially to uh, someone just sitting in, your, in the room. Um, yeah. disc fits and it does okay so yeah, I've gotten it pretty clean there and the catheter disc does fit down in there okay actually it needs to the first one. Now,
voila, now they've all been cleaned up and are ready for action here. Now the next step will be to cut the holes for the sephirot for the crystals to go into. These are the same size holes as we did for the body of the mechanism. They're basically just a little under an inch in diameter. Okay, see, now I am going to cut those holes out. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is all of them. There you go. 
Now, the next thing to do is to cut this um, uh, to the four corner punches that we made originally. That is the size of the mechanism. So we need to trim off the edges. And uh, once I do that, a little bit of gold paint along the edge will probably want to come off. So I'm going to have to touch up with gold right along the edge. Um, I may wait until I get this glued to the face of the, uh, the uh, mechanism. So that's the next thing, trim, and then face meets mechanism. There, it seems to have gotten off what was going to come off, well, for the most part. So it shows me what I need to repair. And that's fine. Okay, so what comes next is attaching the face to the mechanism. Well, this is an important moment in the uh, making of a uh, gate maker. This is, this is like the moment of uh, conception when the, the sperm meets the egg and it takes life. Um, you can, I don't know if you can feel it, but just putting these two together um, is an increase of special energy. You begin to feel the gate maker because of the intention that I have put in the construction of the face and the mechanism itself. Um, so this is the conception. Um, the, the process of its conception is the uniting the face with the mechanism, then inserting the crystals. And that just really sparks things. Uh, the crystals and the sephirotic discs go in next. Um, the moment of birth, if you will, is when I tune the crystals then it becomes fully autonomous, etc. So, gluing this is a very important part of the process. It needs a lot of glue to make the two adhere to each other sufficiently. And then a special way I have of pressing it um, to get the glue to really, truly dry, adhered, etc. So, here we go. We slop on a bunch of glue. And you have to work fairly fast at this because you're covering a lot of area and it's taking a lot of time to do this. Okay, I'm going to put some glue on here too. So, you don't want to dilly-dally, or the glue will dry too much.
start there. Oh yeah, that's an awful lot of glue. Hopefully not too much. Well, we'll see. At this stage, it's better to have a little bit too much than not enough. But you don't want way too much because that just adds too much moisture and you'll have to let the glue dry quite a bit before you uh, join the two pieces. You don't want to get very much glue at all down in the uh, sephirotic holes here. You want to avoid that as much as possible. going to focus my glue here is around the sephirot, around the holes, because that's the most important thing here.
There. Now. I want to blow on it until I dull the sheen of the glue a little bit. Okay, here we go. Making sure that the face matches up <laughs> with the color in the sephirot and the holes. You gotta make sure that your colors are right. White at the top, brown at the bottom. Whoa. press it down make sure that we're making good contact in the right place you can move it around for a while to make sure that it's in the right place oh, gosh. Oh. now even up the uh, edges and the corners keep trying to rise up and separate so you have to keep on top of it you know convince it that it needs to be adhered and go back to the middle again make sure it's all staying down not rising up in the middle well positioned over the sephirotic holes. And again to the edges. It just takes time and practice to learn how much pressure you can apply here without um, misshaping the cardboard underneath. If you press too hard, you're going to dent the cardboard and the whole thing will be dented. So you got to be careful. Better to use lighter pressure than you can than to overdo it. I'm persuading. But you stay with it and eventually you get it down. The glue dries enough while you're working with it. 
Um, and the heat of your hand is going to help that along. And your intention. <laughs> Can't forget your intention. You're intending for the seed to, uh, to hook itself perfectly and firmly to the egg. center, look at it from different angles in the light, make sure that it is flat and not bulging up anywhere, making good contact everywhere. Again, you got to be careful how much pressure you're using. Because especially here on the face, you don't want to put a big dent in it. It would show. It would very much show. So tighten more as it dries. As it dries, it will form itself to the surface of the mechanism to a certain extent. If you have a big bulge, it will stay a big bulge, so you don't want that. But, okay. Now, I'm going to use my fingers and my fingernails and press these, the lower lip of the cardboard on the mechanism to the um, face. That will help it adhere a little bit better. Yeah, it's doing good. Yeah, it was hardly necessary. What you're doing is basically pinching the chip board that's on the surface of the mechanism to the face. on the sephirotic holes here a little more. It's at that stage where keeping some pressure on it for a little bit longer in each press um, makes more sense because it's sticking better. Um, so a little length of pressure <laughs> duration instead of moving my fingers around very quickly like I do in the beginning I'm pressing a little more slowly because things are sticking together do this you need to make sure that your fingers are clean because you're touching the past strips that haven't been varnished at all 
So there's nothing to protect them from whatever is on your fingers. So if your fingers have picked up a lot of uh, graphite from pencil, um, for instance, you'll end up staining the um, past strips up here, especially around Kether. Kether and Tiferet are the two that are very sensitive to staining. And to a certain extent, hod. Okay. press this, but press it a little differently than I have the um, other pieces in the past. You get a piece of, a fresh piece of paper. Ah. Oh. Okay, I take a clean piece of paper. Now, I'm putting a piece of cardboard down because it needs to have something soft but yet rigid. Um, putting a piece of clean piece of white paper and then I'm putting the paths down so the face is down at the moment and then my special heavyweight compression tool here a big piece of fiberboard. That's centered on there. Okay. And then actually I'll this will be heavy enough. This thing weighs a small time. Okay. And that will sit there like that for mm, a day or so, compressing and drying and curing. And then I will um, repair the gold and insert the crystals and put on the sephirotic uh, uh, circles and okay. Okay, it's time to put the crystals into the mechanism. But first, I want to touch up the edges where the gold paint has sloughed off. So, this will take just a couple of minutes here. Okay, that's all repaired, and it uh, looks a little messy, but that will disappear when I put its quote of varnish on. So, let that dry for a few minutes. <clears throat> okay, now we begin installing the crystals. This is the really fun part. Start with Kether and work my way down. I take a crystal sphere. I clean it off a little bit. Okay, now I want to use my little pinch nose pliers here and pick the wires up from the bottom. I want to get them up around the middle of the hole here and pushed back so that the crystal fits in easily. We put the crystal in and press it down. Yeah. Press it down and see if 
this fits in there, okay, and it fits perfectly. Okay, so then we're gonna um, flatten this side, flatten all the cut edges, and then we are going to put some glue on there. Now I stick it on my middle finger because that's the one that fits, and we gently put a little glue on there. You want to get the glue all the way around pretty evenly and reasonably thick. You don't want a lot of glue on here, but you want enough to adhere it. Uh, yeah, that's way too much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Need, uh, need the rag for wiping your fingers off. And you don't want to put this, get this glue on the surface of the disc. You want it only on the back of the disc. And let it dry till it lose, starts to lose its sheen. Okay, that's good. Now you put it on here and butt it up against the cut ends of the pass strips so that it is in place and the connection is very invisible. And you press it down. Doesn't take a lot of pressing because the the crystals are low enough that they don't protrude above too much. They basically protrude just this amount, uh, the hole that I cut in the uh, sephirotic discs. Okay, just make sure that it's down and staying. It doesn't take much with these if you cut everything correctly. Okay. There's the cather disc.
Okay. The last one is in. Uh, my face. Face is complete. The mechanism is complete. Each one that I make is slightly different. It's interesting. Each one has its own personality. There's little flaws, uh, mostly distinguished by their flaws. Um, little inaccuracies in the cutting, little blemishes in the paint. Uh, each is slightly different. And uh, as I'm making one, when I make them for a specific person, um, it, it, it tells me a little bit about their relationship with the gate maker. Areas that they'll have difficulty with, reflected in the difficulty that I had in laying down the path strip. Um, yes, it always tells me something. This one, however, I am not going to be sending off to someone, at least not at this point. I plan to use it in the videos that I'm making um, uh, about uh, the gates. Um, so it will come in very handy for that series. So, now um, I will set it aside. I will set it upside down, face down, on a clean sheet of paper and let it air dry. That way, um, yeah, well, I can't put a weight on it now that the, uh, um, the sephirotic uh, spheres are in. Um, but it will help control how much it uh, convexes here. It's already starting to take on a slightly convex shape. I don't know if you can see it on this camera, but it is convexing in both directions. Um, so, laying it upside down will slow that and uh, diminish it some. So, off to the dryer and I get to start working on the boxing of the mechanism.